that our leads have had their small bit of happiness, it's dad's turn to be very pleased. It means more unpleasantness for our leads, but we're not here for the happy things, are we? We're here for a good fight and shifting loyalties and guilt-torn characters, and a certain brother's redemption arc, all stuff that the show sets the stage for with this week's twists. Note on names, the show switches between J.E., N.A.K. Won and Do Jin, Namu often, depending on the speaker and how they feel. We stick to using J.E. and Do Jin for the adult counterparts and only switch to N.A.K. Won and Namu when the name change is relevant to the scene. Episodes 21 to 24 W.E.E.C.A.P. The dashboard clock ticks down to 12 midnight, fixed by the production team, ending Do Jin and J.E.'s date. J.E. closes her eyes as Dajin leans in for a kiss, and chickens out, leaning on her shoulder instead. Jong Hyun's phone call breaks the awkwardness as he tells Dajin to take time off work. The station is swarming with reporters because of Park Hee Young's theory that Namu has his father's violent streak. After Dajin drops J.E. off at home, she gathers the courage to open Yoon Hee Jae's letter sent from jail. In it, he acknowledges that he ruined her lovely family and tells her that the best way to get back at him is to live her life well. Jae remembers Dajin's request to use him if she needs something. Meanwhile, Dajin thinks of the similar promise they made in their childhood, for him to come to NAK1 if life is too difficult. He turns the car around and reaches her house just as Jae is leaving to go to him. As soon as he's inside, he tells her what we've known for the past 20 episodes, that seeing her kills him with guilt, but not seeing her drives him crazy because he likes her so much. J.E. kisses him before answering that she likes him too. They kiss some more and move on to her bed where they lie down fully clothed, just staring at each other. J.E. makes him promise to say sorry whenever he's feeling guilty so she can assure him right away that she's fine and she likes him over and over. While all but sweet staring is happening, we switch to a frantic Hyun Moo with blood on his sneakers. He ends up in front of Mom's shop again. This time, Mom is there to talk to him. He scolds her for working very late, she's been waiting for you, fool. Mom realizes that he's been watching her all along. She begs him to surrender and pay for his crimes, promising to wait for him to get out of prison again. As usual, he pushes the tempting offer away. He just wanted to check that she, so Jin, and Namu, that jerk, are safe. Mom's safety now comes before his loyalty to Dad as he tells her to stay close to Chief Go and report this visit so they'll assign more cops around her. Da Jin ignores Jong Hyun's warnings to hide and is greeted by reporter Han at the station with her usual, Park Hee Young wronged you, why not work with me to write a defense, tack. He isn't interested but the traitor informant Sun Bae, Kang Nam Gil, takes note of Han's offer. J.E. is back to auditioning for side roles when her image takes a hit from the news. After the director passes her, he fishes for gossip while pretending to be concerned that the scandal she's dating her parents' murderous son can't be true, right? J.E. readily answers, it's not a scandal, before cheerfully excusing herself. Manager P.O. begs his charge to act less happy in public. Her story is all over the news and people are calling Dajin, Dolyan Gamri, a play on Golyan Gamri meaning bittersweet, pain before pleasure. J.E. snickers at the pun and speed walks away from poor Pio who speed walks to keep up and put a lid on this indecent happiness. Dajin's team impresses me with how competent they are as they compare the victims of the hammer attacks. They figure out that the first non-fatal one was by Hyun Mu while the actual deaths and J.E.'s Christmas surprise were committed by a different guy. They also conclude that the two are working separately. Knowing that Christmas Guy could only have heard the details from Dad, Dajin directs his colleagues to check Dad's inmates and cross-reference with psych evaluations and residents of their jurisdiction. Mu Wan is getting warmer too. He's narrowed down a list of inmates including Lee Sung Woo and asks his detective to track down the members of Yoon Hee Jae's fan site. Meanwhile, he's off to interview the idol murderer in the flesh for the Park Hee Young vs Yoon Hee Jae assault case. Dad recognizes Mu Won's name and keeps derailing the investigation by feeling sorry for the prosecutor who lost his biological parents in a tragedy before losing his adoptive ones to him. Mu Won feels sorry for Dad too, he was betrayed and beaten by his 16-year-old son whom he trusted so much. Dad denies Park's story, claiming a parent won't hurt his kid and vice versa. Mu Won says he's not a parent but a monster, which Dad points out is better than having no parents at all. Ouch. Also, I beg to differ. 
He gets under Mu Wan's skin by asking who's gonna die from his bad luck this time. He blames his laxness as an opa for NAK-1 and Namu's relationship, playing on Mu Wan's fear that Namu is dangerous. Mu Wan loses it at the mention of his sister's name. He hauls Yun Hee Jae up and slams him against the wall, threatening to kill him and his favorite son if he hurts NAK-1. Cops enter to break up the fight and let Mu Wan know that Park Hee Young was found dead in her apartment. Oh no, it's final. Dad leaves with a smug smile and the observation that Mu Wan is also dangerous he should stay away from his sister too. Watch the video Stay Away From My Sister Dae Jin is currently nearby. He's out on the steps apologizing to Chief Go who's subject to an inquiry for covering up Namu's attack on Dad. Chief assures him that he'll be fine. He did it for Dae Jin and Mom who showed him there are still good people in the world when he was losing hope in mankind. Dad's prison transport passes by during this heartwarming moment. At first he lights up to see Dejin in the flesh, even from afar, but his eyes turn murderous to see Dejin smile while Chief Go ruffles his hair. Dad remembers Namu resenting the fact that his father is a monster, and I'm very worried for Chief right now even if there are three guards, safety windows, and handcuffs between him and Dad. Dejin gets a call about Park Hee Young's death and heads over to her house. He sees the discarded hammer and the partially burnt rug and figures out that it's a copycat crime of Yoon Hee Jae's. Traitor Sun Bae Nam Gil rummages through Park's desk until he finds a recording pen which he secretly pockets. He then joins the team as they watch the CCTV and mark two suspects matching Hyun Moo's and Sung Woo's profiles entering the apartment the previous night. If you've ever wished for Hyun